We're going to talk about two RV products that are game changers if you're in a campground with no water or no sewer. Plus, an easy way to improve your water pressure no matter where you're camped. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you can camp pretty much anywhere you want to camp, uh, regardless of whether you have uh, sewer or water hookup and electricity for that matter, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk, focus mostly on sewer and water because those are huge issues for us. We have always said that we're horrible boondockers. The reason for that is because we don't conserve water that well. Well, we have come up with a solution for that and we wanted to share that with you guys. Yes, we are actually in a campground that only has electricity. We have no water and sewer hookups and we're here for 28 days. Now it's not that unusual to find campgrounds without water and sewer. A lot of state and national parks are like that. We're in a county park and we find this to be a game changer because we are, we can be less picky about what campgrounds we go yeah. to. Yeah, we've been without sewers before, but we've never been without a water source at the site. <laughs> not for 28 days. Not for 20, yeah, not for, a, not for almost a month. So instead of breaking camp, here's what we've got. The pump, this is how we're gonna transfer it from, well, I'll show you. Cart before the horse here. Can't use the pump until you fill the bladder. Also, how big is the bladder? So the bladder is 50 gallons, 53 gallons, I think, officially, but I've done this once already and I couldn't get all of the water out. I guess I could have, but really would have tried, worked at it, but I think I may have lost one or two gallons that was left in the bladder that I just ended up dumping out. So 50 usable gallons. 50 usable, yeah. Now, one thing you want to think about when you're setting this thing up, once water weighs, what, eight pounds roughly, give or, ta give or take, uh, eight pounds a gallon. So you want to think about how this thing is positioned because you're going to, the pump is going to have to be connected and, and the drill to, to drive this thing. So you wouldn't want it out here because you'll be having to hold it all the time. So, so it's a drill powered pump. So this is a drill powered pump. Yeah, I put my drill on this and, and let it rip. So you want to place that because once that starts filling, it's, it's going to be too heavy to move. Yes, correct. Whenever I'm hooking up to water in a campground, I always... I always run it a little bit. make sure there's nothing in the hose. Actually, I run it before I hook up the hose and then I run it when I hook the hose up before I connect it to the, to the RV, or in this case, stick it in the bladder. really maximize how much water you're getting in it you can come up here and tug on the bag a little bit not sure how much yeah they didn't get you very much though it's still... no it's really not let me yeah I think you're good so how much does this weigh then a lot 400 pounds maybe you're not moving it that's for sure attention to the arrow on the pump there is a directional flow if you're not familiar with pumps there's always a directional flow and just clear out anything that may have gotten in the fitting or in the pump before you 
pump it into your fresh water tank. Good. Unfortunately, my drill does not have the button that holds the trigger. So I have to do it that way. So what was the total elapsed time? I think around 40 minutes, all in. Yeah, it was about 10 minutes to fill it and maybe 15 minutes or a little bit more to, to pump it out. Yeah, yeah, plus to set up and break down and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 30, 40 minutes, which is way faster than if you had to break camp, hitch up and drive your camper over to get water. Oh yeah, we're talking hours if we do it that way. We'll put a link to the bladder in the description and it also will be at our Amazon store. Yeah, and you're gonna need a pump, obviously. Um, the little drill operated pumps are cheap. I think we paid $14 for the one that we're using. Yeah, so it'll all be at our Amazon store. So the next big time saver is the macerator pump. So talk about that. So this is the, well, not the heart of the system, but this is where all the wastewater goes, obviously. This is a 28 gallon tote. And instead of towing it behind the truck, the way um, a lot of people do it, most people do it probably, we put it in the bed of the truck And yes, it's empty right now. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Of course, you want to make sure that the outlet is facing out. This is the heart of the system right here. This is a macerator pump. It actually will pump the waste to the back of the truck. I'll show you the hose here in a second. Now you can put a garden hose on. This is a garden hose fitting, but when we got it, I got this adapter so that I could use a much larger hose I just thought it would be less likely to clog with this hose as opposed to a garden hose. This is the fitting that it, that it connects with, so you need this adapter. Here's something that I have found that was very helpful. This is too low to put a five gallon bucket under, so these, these drain pans that you can get at pretty much any auto parts store um, work really well. Oh, good. So there's. The valves are working today. I got them fully closed. Now, it, it comes with this, all of this is the way it comes, but I use 10 gauge wire. I made a, I've got a dedicated circuit here with a, with a 20 amp fuse in line. Now here's the setup that I use to keep the keep this from jumping out because if I just put it in here like that that would happen so don't want that. you don't want that you definitely don't want that so that works I have not had I have not had any mishaps with it with it set up like this One of the benefits of doing it this way is that you're not dragging it behind the truck because, you know, so I, I've been in situations where the dump station was a little more than a mile away from our campsite and, you know, going at five miles an hour pulling this thing is difficult. You're only lifting an empty tank to put it up here. You're never, you're never dealing with a full tank. You're never lifting a full tank. Yeah, and don't forget to take the sewer hose along with you. I'll admit I've done that once. The nice thing about having the macerator tote set up is that sometimes you might want a site that is nicer than a site with a sewer. Um, you know, and, and now we don't, I don't even consider that as an option. Uh, you know, I don't think about 
well, this one's got a sewer, so I want this one as opposed to this one with no sewer. And this is pretty common. If you're staying at a campground, stay on a lake, we've noticed that a lot of the lakefront sites do not have sewer. And we see that quite a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so the ones that are on higher ground have sewer hookup. So we, we just stay wherever we want. The Mass Raider does require a 20 amp circuit, so you're going to have to run a, a dedicated circuit for it. We'll put a link to the macerator pump in the description and also will be in our Amazon store. And we also have a special macerator pump installation video where we'll have a link to that in the description. So the accumulator, I had never heard of such a thing, is sort of um, stereotypical about RV life, is not getting enough water flow. If you're taking a shower, you don't get that, you know, blast of water. One of the secrets to getting a little bit more pressure is to switch over to your pump, even if you are camping hooked up to water. Mm -hmm. But then the pump pulses, and this is what the accumulator smooths yeah, out. And it just gives you a steady stream, more like what you have in your house. It's one of the easiest modifications that I've made. It's as simple, you're just putting it in line between the outlet side of the pump and the inlet side of the Nautilus. You really want this, no matter what kind of camping you do. It, it really makes a difference on the water pressure. It does make a difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's noticeable difference, yep. I think the accumulator we bought was under $100 with the fittings that, that I bought, you know, maybe a little over 100 bucks. And it doesn't seem to take any maintenance. You just install no, it and that's it. you just install it, it and you, you do pump it up. It's got a Schrader valve on top, like mm -hmm. a tire valve. You pump it up to the cutoff pressure of your pump, which in most cases is right under 40 PSI and then you don't have to touch it. Remember, you will find links to everything we talked about in the description and also at the Amazon store. Yeah, and tell us some of your game changer modifications you've done to your rigs. Yep, we want to hear what's helped you out in RV life.